I know. This looks like an absolute mess. The leaves on these plants are pretty much mush. The stems are dead as well. But this is what New Zealand yams need to look like right before you harvest them. New Zealand yams are called oka, and I've shown them to you before, around this time last year. They're a root vegetable, and they only start forming those lovely, colorful tubers after the autumn equinox. And then they need a couple more months to plump up and then once all of the foliage has died back, you can dig them up. And today's the day. We're gonna dig up the oka harvest and see what we have. There were two more New Zealand yam plants in that bed and I dug them both up, but I was a little bit disappointed at the yield. They just didn't do as well as last year, but that happens. From year to year, our harvests change, and some years are good years for some veg, and other years are better. So I came down here to this long bed that runs along the veg patch, and it was down here that I planted a few more New Zealand yam plants, and I got some more. The pink ones were down here, and at least that booked out my yield, my harvest for this year. But while I was down here, I also dug up the yacon, and that's what I have here beside me. Yacon are also a South American root vegetable, and I have found them to do exceedingly well in my climate. In fact, there was one growing in the polycrub this year, and the yield on it, despite its massive size, was nowhere near what these two plants have produced here. Now this is a type of a root or tuber vegetable that you mainly eat raw and we've had quite a few salads with these last year and as you can see there's plenty more to come and all you do with growing them is plant them, give them a little bit of support and just let them get on with things and they create or grow these amazing big crunchy and sweet tubers. They're a little bit difficult to get a hold of, but once you do have some yakon growing in your garden, you can save the plants from year to year and continue to grow them, which is what I have done. order a yacon to grow in your own garden, you won't be sent a tuber like this. Instead, you will be sent small plants. And that's because these tubers are just storage elements. So there's just energy in here for the plant. These don't grow into new plants like other tubers do. And so instead, what you need to do to continue and to carry on your yacon from year to year to ensure that it's perennial is to replant the actual plants and they'll oftentimes divide into two or more plants and that's what i've done here so these seven plants that i have just potted up they came from those two out in the garden so i was able to divide them up they're in their own individual pots here i'm going to keep them here in the greenhouse potentially move them out to the polycrub if i feel it's getting a little bit too cold and then next year i'll plant them out in the garden again Yakon aren't the only tubers that I have here in the greenhouse. In these six pots are little tubers of a dwarf variety of Jerusalem artichoke. My friend Liz Zora brought them as a gift when she visited a couple of months ago. And they should grow no taller than about three feet, so about a meter, and really, really great for windy sites like mine. There are various different types of herbs and plants overwintering. And I also planted my excess autumn onion sets into these little pots. This is a variety called Autumn Champion. And I couldn't find a space for them in the garden. So what I did was I put them into these little pots and then very early in spring, I'll plant them outside. And if you have garlic or onion sets that you cannot find space for, or perhaps your garden is a bit waterlogged in winter, you can do this plant them out in spring and they'll grow perfectly. Now beside them are my broad beans. These are also called fava beans, or I think also field beans. And I've started them off again here under cover and these need planting out as soon as possible. 
in a tub very similar to this one. In fact, identical to this one. I grew a single seed potato this summer and it was for a local competition, the Big Spud weigh-in at Cronky Vadi. And you might have wondered what happened with it. Now, it's been a good couple of months since the weigh-in happened, and I took some video of the day so you can have a little feeling for what this event was like. Is this the first time that you've been? It is absolutely the first time, so the uh, the excitement is intense. <laughs> I can't I... wait to hear the uh, the, the result. And uh, are you tempted to grow your own next year? Well, do you know what? I think you know, all they have to do is to give us the you know the the seed and the whatever and, and the tub. We'll get on to it. Yes. <laughs> There's quite a bit of winter veg back in the veg patch and we're gonna go have a look at it in a second. But for the most part, vegetables in the winter, they've done most of their growing in late summer and autumn. And they're really just kind of waiting out the winter months until they can spring back into life again. And so they're kind of in a refrigerator in a way. Your veg patch can be a living larder and throughout the winter that's what I do I nip out I get a little bit of chard or Brussels sprouts or kale or carrots and then I use it as I need it and I'm able to do that in my climate now because most of the growing is done for the year I can focus on a lot more projects and tasks in the garden that help with maintenance and structure and all of that and i'm here in front of this big pile of wood chip because this is a project that i have been meaning to get to but it's just been so wet recently and quite busy as well this is something i'm going to be doing after christmas though relaying wood chip on all of the paths in the veg patch now earlier i did lift up one of the paths just to check to see how broken down the wood chips were and they weren't nearly to the point where I, I could harvest and use that as compost in the beds so I'm going to leave it down I'm going to cover it with more of this wood chip and then that will tidy up the paths it will help to stop weeds from growing and sprouting through the old compost and then in another year or two I can harvest at least the lower levels of the wood chip on the paths and it's perfectly good compost pretty much free and it's developing under your feet as you're gardening through the gardening year in my last garden video i planted up some broccoli and cauliflower in this bed they're getting a little bit nibbled by slugs but they're hanging on and the garlic that i planted here along the side has sprouted so you can see all of those green blades that's next year's garlic harvest. Before I planted cauliflower and broccoli, I got in this couple of rows of cabbage and they're quite a bit larger than the other brassicas and these are going to be a fantastic spring crop. The light is so lovely right now and it's quite a warm and dry day, which is most important, dry most of all. It has been torrential recently but it hasn't phased the autumn onions. And I've put the senshu, so the Japanese onion down here. And then up here in this bed are the shallots and a red onion. So the shallots are down here at the bottom of the bed. And then there's red onions just above. And then I planted out some more autumn onions just above here, but quite a bit later, I can see just the very first little green popping up. Flat leaf parsley is such an incredible 
herb to have in the garden this time of the year, at least here. It does just fine in cold weather. And I've been just coming out here and taking small handfuls to use in cooking. It's right below where the leeks are and they're looking a little bit sorry for themselves, but they're standing up well. And there are two different varieties here, this darker green one, and then the lighter green, more upright one here on the right. These are a really good crop for the winter. This end of the bed is filled with carrots and I've taken the, the mesh off because we don't have any carrot root flies attacking them right now. But these carrots have not grown as long as the ones in the veggie pod. Let's pull this one and see if we have a decent sized one here to prove me wrong. <laughs> I have been proven wrong. There are some good sized carrots in here. This is my perennial kale. It's a variety called Taunton Dean. And believe it or not, all of this is just one plant. I planted it a couple of years ago and it was really suffering in the winds. And so I staked it with that piece of wood there. Yet it did continue to lean over and wherever the stems touched the ground, they formed roots. And so, so this plant has spread over this entire bottom of the bed. You can see the stems down there and it is firmly rooted in. With this type of kale, the tasty leaves are the really young ones here in the center, right at the top. The big ones are edible as well, but they're a bit more leathery, not as nice to eat, kind of like the outer leaves on a cabbage. But those young ones are really nice. And because this is perennial, I can harvest from it all winter long. I'm not sure that I've ever shown you my patch of perennial leeks. This is a variety called Poirot Perpetual, and they come up twice a year. And then to harvest them, all you do is you cut them right above the soil, take the little leek into the kitchen, use as you would any other leeks or even green onions, and then they come back. They come back twice a year. And they're pretty hardy and they'll stand through most of the winter and into spring. Back behind me, the polycrub looks lovely in this light, it's kind of dappled light through the plastic. But those little specks that you can see there, they look a little bit different from the inside of the polycrub. And it also means I've got another task for later on this month, another cleaning task to tackle. Hey, good girl. Hey. About a month ago, I brought you inside and we harvested the sweet potatoes. And um, that's what all those little dappled, speckled lights on the side of the polycrub are. They are the remnants of leaves. Now I've pulled the vines down for the most part on the trellis, but you can see that there's quite a lot of goo on this plastic. And so I think I'm gonna to have to bring the pressure washer in here and just blast this plastic. In fact, I might just blast all of it in here and get it a little bit tidier for spring. I've also been in touch with the Thirsty Earth who manufacture these automatic Oyas and I'm going to dig them all up. Now these ones I have put here in preparation for pulling them up out of the indigo which is still absolutely lush and growing. I'm surprised to say the least, but once they do die back, I will pull all the rest of them out and overwinter them someplace where they can't freeze. Maggie, you always have to steal the show, don't you? Don't you? It's been quite wet here, but on the off days that it is dry, I have been getting quite a, quite a bit done outside, including planting up a couple more bulb lasagnas. So I have a few on the deck ready to go for spring. And I have a video showing how you can plant your own, and it's not too late. 
if you would like to have a pot that contains waves and waves of flowers that will bloom right through spring. Now out here in the birdies beds, I wanted to show you my watercress. And I've had so many people try to correct me and say that it's landcress. It's actually watercress and I have it growing in the water and I have it growing in the beds as well. And it seems to actually prefer growing in the beds. This is a peppery green. It's very tasty and it will spread if you let it. I'll just show you all of the roots that form along the stems there. This is such a great green. I got it as a plant from Victoriana Nurseries years ago and it always kind of suffered in pots, which is where I've kept it. But in the beds, it has done so well. I think that if you grow a vegetable garden, you've got to have at least two loves. The first is the garden itself. You really do have to love gardening for it to work. Plants just don't take care of themselves. You can't just plant a garden and expect to have a really good yield. You have to care for it over weeks and months. And eventually when you do get a harvest, you need to love cooking vegetables as well. And I think that there are some couples out there that fortunately have one part of the partnership, loving the garden and the other loving cooking. But I think many of us love them both. And now in winter, when there are fewer harvests coming out of the garden, I mean, that's all relative based on how you garden and what your climate is like. But now that we're in winter, there are a bit fewer harvests. Being inside and shelling beans that you've grown in the summertime and then using them to make really hearty meals, it really just is the pinnacle of what growing your own should be. I hope that you've enjoyed this video of the garden in December. And we're gonna be taking a little bit of a break over the next couple of weeks. Josh and I, we're gonna relax a bit. We're gonna celebrate with family and friends. And then I'm gonna be back in the garden before you know it, because there are things to plan, things to plant, and projects to get on with. And the start of the new year, despite it being cold and potentially miserable, is also the start of the gardening year for me. And there are a lot of things on my to-do list. So I will leave you with a message of Merry Christmas. Hope you have an amazing holiday season, no matter what you celebrate in December. And I will see you in the new year for another year of gardening and DIY content. I'll see you then.